very important for us to understand is the concept of tawakkul and how we put all of this together. Okay? Allah says, He instructs us in the Quran, He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, Say, nothing will happen to us except what Allah has written. We believe that as Muslims. If I or you or someone else is decreed to walk out of this thing free, from no disease, then that was already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though I may come into contact with a whole bunch of people who have, who have the pandemic, who, who have the, 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 the illness. Okay? And subhanAllah, I may have practiced all of the practices that, that they recommend by washing my hands every you know, so often using the, uh, the, uh, the hand sanitizer, social distancing, not mixing, and it, it, it may still wind up with the, with the illness. <laughs> only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written, that's, that's the only thing that's going to happen to us. Who are Mawlana? Allah is our guardian. He is our Mawla, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is our protector. And he is our wali, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكِّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah, let the believers put their trust. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, put your trust. Upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rely. Put your reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this, brothers and sisters in Islam, is a very important concept. I don't want us to, to miss it. What does it mean that you put your trust in Allah? Unfortunately, we see too many believers who think that it means to abandon reason, to abandon the practices that protect us. Our Prophet ﷺ was the best one who ever put his trust in Allah. When he went to Mecca, even though there was a presumption that there wasn't going to be fighting, when they went into Mecca, Prophet ﷺ had his armor on, he had his helmet on. And he wasn't going around saying to people, why do I need it? Yeah, it's a, it's, there's a war, but why do I need armor and why do I need a helmet? Allah protects me. Yes, Allah will protect you, but Allah has also instructed us to take means. The same one who said, While Allah is better to in and upon in, in Allah put your trust, the same one who said that said, Khudu hidrakum. Take your precautions. Allah said that, and He said that. Our Prophet alayhi salatu was said, in a famous hadith, he says, La adwa wa la tiyara to the end of the hadith. Very beginning of the hadith is what I want to focus on. He says, La adwa. There is no, nothing that is contagious. What? What does that mean? What the Prophet ﷺ is telling us here is that there is no contagion that acts on its own. That the Things only spread from one person to another person by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are not independent actors, independent agents. They only act by the will of Allah. La adwa. So there is nothing that independently can go from one place to another place, infect this person and then that person, except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that. And then what did the Prophet Sallallahu say at the end of that same hadith? Same hadith where it says that none of that happens except for the will of Allah? He then said, And run away from the one who is majdum, yani the one who has leprosy, which is, a, which is an infectious disease. Run away from him the way that you would run away from a lion. Okay, if we're saying that there's nothing contagious that can act on its own, then why would I run away? You run away because you have to take the means. You do. So the Prophet is teaching us here to rely upon the creator of the means and the methods. Don't rely upon the means and the methods, but use them. Use them, but don't rely upon them. So we have our i'tiqad. We have our belief as Muslims. And our practices are surrounded, or our practices are based on those beliefs. Very important concept for us to understand because many of us are taking this thing too lightly. And we have extremes. We have people that are, that are absolutely hysterical. 
They lock themselves in a room. They don't want to see their own families put the food under the door. I mean, just absolute hysteria. And then we have people who act like it's business as usual. Today is just like yesterday, and it's not. It's really not. And this is not just some, uh, even if this is, you know, we want to go with conspiracy theories and things like that. The reality is that's, that has nothing to do with what the reality is today. If this was a conspiracy theory for, I mean, if this was a conspiracy to control populations and so on and so forth, whatever it might have started as, it is what it is today. And, and we have to deal with the reality of today. So it's very important for us also to recognize that our tawakkul and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not negate us doing those things that the professionals in their fields are recommending that we do. However, brothers in Islam, and this is the point that we want to make today in this khutbah, is that all of those means that are being talked about are physical means. Washing your hands, using hand sanitizer, staying a certain distance, coughing in the crook of your arm, uh, uh, self-isolating or quarantining to the end of it. These are physical means. Nobody except for a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remind you of divine protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As believers, we, again, don't process things the same way that other people process it. And therefore, we have to seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from something that is far more dangerous than COVID-19. Pay attention here. What is far more dangerous than COVID-19 and what has crippled more people globally than COVID-19 is the fear of COVID-19. It's the fear. It is the anxiety that comes with a global pandemic. How is it that we fight this fear or we protect ourselves from this fear? And, and, and I, I'm not talking about taking precautions. We, we already said that we have to take our precautions, but how do we keep ourselves from panic? There's only one way. And that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide your heart. It's, it's for you to allow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide your heart. You have to get out of the way and turn your affair over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fear and this anxiety, the same way that every illness has symptoms, right? When we talk about what we're dealing with today, the COVID-19 and talking about the fever and the dry cough and the other things that are associated, these are symptoms, but there's an underlying illness. Fear and anxiety are symptoms. The underlying illness is that we don't have enough trust in Allah. Mm. The underlying illness is that we're not really sure whether Allah is our rub, is he, he really our caretaker? We don't have that confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove from us the affliction or to decree what's best for us, even if that means that we're afflicted with the illness. 